YOLO composing gloves here. And today we're looking at the noise module inside of Phase Plant. I'm talking kind of loud. And what we have here is a really cool sound just to sort of convince you the noise module is worth your time. Here's what it sounds like. Let's play like a low note. <laughs> And I have it in context in a track here. And just to convince you it is noise, let me take these two lanes of specialized effects off. And that's our that's our input. <laughs> and if we take those away, it's pretty dang impressive what you can get out of it. So in context of like a small loop. <laughs> Very nice, very nice, right? So there's this ha this is a much more sophisticated patch, but there's an example of what you can sort of do with the noise oscillator or just generator. And the modulation in this patch is actually pretty dang important. So maybe someday, but I just wanted to convince you that it's cool. There's some things that can go on here. Also, an another typical use is to layer it onto sounds. I didn't make a riser with the noise generator. That's another good use. Here I'm tossing a bit of noise onto the flute patch from the last video. So you can hear that. I'll probably turn it up in editing. It's very soft. And if you play higher notes, it changes. And it just sounds, you know, like someone's blowing over the mouthpiece of a flute or something. My down button isn't working like it used to. And let's go ahead and turn on the source, the main source. So it's just a little sprinkle on top of the sound. It's the spice that you toss on and it sounds nice, you know, when you put it on there. So let's let's go ahead, let's open up a noise here and take a look at it. So right off the bat, we're greeted with the noise. If we play it, we get white noise. Doesn't matter what key. Or this isn't white noise, this is pink noise. This is white noise. It sounds pretty thin here. It's just because it's mono. If we bring it up to stereo, and that, by the way, is what that knob does. It's a stereo knob. Now, this slope knob over here controls the kind of noise we get out of it. So, noise is described in colors. Uh, I don't know exactly why, uh, but we have here white noise, and it even says down here white. And if we bring it up, a 3 dB roll-off per octave is pink noise, and a 6 dB roll-off is brown. What do I mean by dB roll-off? Well, let me open up a equalizer here. Okay, so you see this roll-off? There is a roll-off here that takes time and it turns down frequencies. So the, the higher the frequencies go, and you see that this is a shelving filter, but in a, in a roll-off, roll-off, it just keeps doing this forever. This, this slope just keeps going and going and going. So if I were to make this really gradual, if this line corresponded to every octave, this line went down three, so that would be a slope, right? Because we're, we're correlating a rise over a run. Then that is the, the roll-off. And so frequencies will get softer here. Now, white noise and pink noise have a pretty cool special relationship. Uh, I don't know of brown noise, um, how it would fit with brown noise. I've never studied that. But white noise is equal energy per frequency. And so every single frequency has an equal energy. They're, they're all the same. But pink noise has a roll-off here. And that's because pink noise is a 3 dB per octave, which correlates to equal energy per octave. So you know from Sound and Synth Basics, that series, that an octave is just a doubling of frequency. So consider this. If we had 20 hertz and 40 hertz, there's 20 hertz in between that, right? 40 minus 20 is 20. So there's 20 hertz. Now if we go to up to 10,000 hertz, an octave away would be 20,000 hertz. So that's a difference of 10,000. So the those small 20 hertz, in order to have the same energy, is going to be a lot louder than the 10,000 hertz that are up there. And so it ends up being that that is the difference between white and pink. It has special acoustic properties. Um, brown, uh, I don't know of one specifically for brown. It's just 6 dB per octave. So probably just like a doubling or a halving or whatever. But that is the basics of here. So it just ends up being that white noise sounds really bright because all, all the high frequencies can just ring right on through because they have equal energy. And... There's a lot of phase canceling and whatnot, which is why our ears aren't like annihilated upon hearing this. And then if we come down here, we, we basically this acts, the slope acts as a filter. That's why it's also called slope, by the way. Uh, that whole line business. Very cool, very nice. All right, so the only control in here that's of any interest 
because these are grayed out, is the level. Is that's it. These you can make some cool risers out of this just by having it, you know, turn up over time and then. I'm not gonna do one right now because the effects will get, I'll get totally distracted with the effects. But that's that's the gist of it. Uh, we already talked about stereo Seed, I have a way of showing off Seed. So Seed's a really interesting one. Stable just means that the noise is not truly random. It's the exact same every time. The pattern is just so complicated, it sounds like noise, but it's the same noise every single time. So you see how it's the same? Nothing exciting there. If I go to random though, you hear changes in that. And this this can matter, check it out. Uh, if we go to that crazy bass patch, the bass, and look at this, we have, I'm on random right now, so my bass is actually slightly different every time. It might not sound like it, but if I go to stable, it's pretty clearly, this is very, very, very similar. Now this, this is a teeny thing. I, I liked random more. See, some have a little bit different of a resonancy pattern in there, and so I liked random. But there you go, there's an example. Seed can come in handy from time to time. Let's turn our sustain back up. We have some other kinds of noise here. We have this sort of quantized noise, and then we have this interpolated noise. And whenever you see something like this, um, with a lot of smooth smoothness to it, that's gonna sound really filtered. Now, as you play higher notes in this sort of, uh, I don't know what the official name for this mode is, keep track, oh, it's called smooth noise. Very smooth. As you get higher, it gets brighter, it gets closer to white noise. But it is key tracked, both of these are, so you can play notes with them. That is the kind of noise I'm using in here, and that's also why these other options appear, and it gets really, these become very interesting options to have. So, okay, so we have our noise. Very nice, very cool. We also have our sort of bit crush noise. What's the official name of this? Uh, key track stepped noise. Step, it's, it's not really a bit crusher, but it reminds me of one. And we can choose to move the phase on this, so that's pretty interesting. This, we could shift it, we could change its harmonics. And semi, uh, semitone, so we can do all the stuff that we could do with the analog module. What is really cool about this though, and what I'm taking advantage of in this other patch, is the ability to modulate these things. Now, I didn't use like a, a consistent modulator because I wanted to use just a noise modulator. Um, but let me just show you what this does. So I can, of course, modulate these audio-wise. Let's do the amplitude first. So that's the effect we get. Very nice. Phases of particular interest. And this is a, a complicated thing to explain. I just mostly want you to understand, try messing with the modulation. And let me give you, here's a sound that's already been developed, right? Let's go ahead and take off the modulation on the semi -cent. That's undo it. So that's the effect we get there with the shift. The shift is really important, actually shockingly important. And then we have phase. Take that off. Very nice. Very nice. So th these two are sort of just like general small timbre movements, but the shift is of utmost importance. And it's being shifted around randomly with the noise modulating itself. It's pretty wild to think about. But that's the noise module in a nutshell. Let's uh, let's make a thing with noise, shall we? So here we go. We got some noise. I'm gonna go with this sort of bit crushed noise. Is that what I went with last time? Maybe maybe we go with something different this time. Ah, uh, what the hey? We'll go with this. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toss a filter in the middle, and it's in the general generator area filters. And my motivation is just to shave a little bit of the high end off. And I like the fact that it's key tracks. We're gonna send this in, and I'm gonna have it go through a comb filter first. This is just sort of get some textures out of it. And I'm gonna load up a key module. Uh, where are you, utility, not utility. You're in here somewhere. Notes, 
and we're going to take the note and map it to the hertz value here. And that's very nice, very good. Do we have an add utility? We do not have one, we have a multiply utility though. Okay, cool. So we're gonna go with that. I'm gonna toss a chorus on here, or a flanger, whatever. Let's put a reverb on this as well. I'm gonna, I'm done with that. Mm, I'm not sure if I'm done with this. All right, let's get a disperser on this. And I'm gonna bring up an envelope and move it, move the frequency with that. My attack is super fast. Uh, another filter, please. Filter, thank you. And we're gonna attach that to the same envelope. Move this up. Maybe we'll make some cut sort of a lasery sound. Let's bring the, the resonance. Sure, why not, you know? Okay, let's, uh, a formant filter could be cool. I don't want it to move. Let's just pick a static spot. Sure, why not? That's just gonna be an interesting move. Uh, let's do a chorus. Let's uh, do some modulation here. This time I'm gonna experiment with um, using an analog source instead. Let's start with the triangle wave and do some uh, linear FM. Let's try changing these shifts. Let's move this up. Let's just change the harmonic. Let's go to it. Okay, so I kind of want to get a note out of this. Uh, so the way we're gonna do that, this is what I did last time. I'm gonna just take a resonator Stick it at the beginning. Bring the intensity all the way up and then map that key wise 100% and take this down to a C. I didn't check the tuning on this, but I believe it should work out. Uh, interesting. Let's try the square. That's pretty nice thing right there. I mean, there's still a ways to go texture wise, but we've got an interesting core going on. Uh, let's take the voices down to one. Let's add an EQ. Uh, actually, a couple of EQs in various places could be pretty handy. Let's also, we need a low pass filter somewhere in here. Let's toss a filter in this madness. Where do I want to toss it? Uh, before the disperser, after the disperser. Not a low pass, I want a high pass. Let's make this a bit quicker. Yeah, sure, what the heck, let's just run with that. Uh, I want to attempt to mess with a distortion. Let's mess with our harmonic. Let's mess with this a bit more. That is an interesting response. Oh my gosh. Okay, uh, filter, the initial filter. Let's change that. What would that sound like? Let's give it its own envelope and let's try turning that down. Ah, let's go for a pluck sound. What the heck? Let's just go for that. No reverb. So many effects. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Uh, let's move. What would this... If I bring the decay really fast, what would that do? Oh, that does cool things. That's what that does. Go lower. Dang 
at keyboard. Okay, I'm gonna bring the decay down. It's a little obnoxious. How, let's bring the earlies up. Early reflections. Another EQ. Uh, probably gonna tame it back a bit. I might just undo what I did here. I kind of want to key track a EQ to follow that note around uh, with a peak, but that, that's going to take too much time. So I'm not going to do that now, but that's definitely a thought I'm having right now. Uh, if you want to take the time to figure it out. Tapes, tape stops, another really fun one. If you mess with automation, um, let's go for like a, uh, a ring mod. This is going to screw with our tuning though. See how they all seem, sound like the same note now? At least it's not tuned like a regular thing would be. I guess what we can do is we could take this and link it to that, but we'll get notes like we can play conventional notes now. What the heck? We'll just throw all tuning out the door. Who even cares? Let's move this. Okay, let's bring the release way down. This sound like low. It sounds dumb. That's because our filter, I bet, though, is in the way. This one? Or is it this one? No, it's not that one. I guess I don't have a filter in the way. Let's try tossing a distortion in there. Distortion. Yeah, that's a bad place. Let's try after. I'm not digging it. Guess we'll just stick to the high stuff. That sounds cool enough, though. I'm gonna stop here. Let's uh, let's save it. If you if you have never saved a preset in here before, be really careful. This is not a save icon. This is a clear icon. Thankfully, the undo button will undo this if you click it. Which, in some sense, that's like final move. You're dead. So, user presets. Um, if you want to add folders, like I have folders here, you probably don't. Because you notice you actually can't save in the factory area. You have to go to the user folder for the save as icon. Save as icon will make it so that when you save, like let's say you clone this and you want to make a new preset of that, you hit save as, it'll allow you to save a completely new preset. Like you can rename stuff and change it to the description. If you hit save, it's just going to overwrite. It's of course going to check with you first. And one thing that I really love, I don't, I don't know, I guess... It was, a, it was a move that I didn't think was going to matter to me that much. But you can actually, they may get so easy to get to the actual place your presets are. Where in some synthesizers, this is like doing freaking surgery, man. It's crazy. You can also change your folder. Like this is so, this is, I don't know. It's a small move that I really appreciated. So in the plucks, I've actually already got quite a few plucks. Um, I'm, I don't know. I guess this is technically a pluck. I don't know what, what we should call this thing. We'll call this, um, I don't know. Uh, what do they, what do they call these? Yeah, yeah, things with the bit crushers and the pitch shifting and stuff like that. I don't know. We'll just call it like crushy. Uh, I don't know what the proper terminology, if there is any. We'll call it the crushy. Uh, the crushy. Yeah. Whatever. Play high notes. I generally try to say what kind of notes. See, I try messing with reverb. Some of these are just like descriptions. Um, but play high notes. Save this. Saved. Okay, cool. So yeah, so it's really, really cool how many, I mean, like with just a with just noise modules, it's kind of insane what's possible. A lot of it's thanks to just the amazing snap-ins that you were able to use here. Um, and then if you really wanted to, you could go into the channel, but I try to keep things inside the same preset. That way, when I load it up, I can just quickly flip through cool sounds. And I really feel like the effects actually allow us to get some pretty dang complete sounds. Like I don't find myself reaching for the mixer. Um, if you have any questions about this, let me know, subscribe, hit the bell icon and have a blessed day.